saw you kicking. <laughs> wow, and I thought, oh Jesus, there is so much power behind. So what do you need to be able to practice that? What gives you that power and that strength? What is it? Is it the concentration? Is it to be fit in your body? Like, obviously you have muscles. Can I? Yeah, there is muscle, <laughs> muscle power. <laughs> so what, what's, what's required to really good in Muay Thai? Um, definitely the strength, I would say, and also that technique. So you know like exactly how to perform the kick, that you can bring your full power in from your body and has a lot to do with cardio as well. But I think just a combination of all three things of those will make your kick the best. <laughs> and of course a lot of practice. When you talk about strength, is it rather the mental or the physical strength? Because when I was, I think even two of us, we were together, it was like, take your time, don't just kick, don't just kick out of, you want to get rid of your anger and all that is within you. Take your time, have a look where are you going to kick, so think before you kick. So is it just the mental or is it the physical skill, uh, strength that you need? I think it's a mix of both. Like, obviously you need the physical strength that you can perform with a lot of power, but then the mental mental strength to keep going and keep pushing and like don't stop even though if you're tired and you already felt like you cannot make another one because if your mentally strength is good then you can always keep going <laughs> i love that i so love it and when i did it i felt so great after it's the same for you it's like mind blowing yeah it's like you're just i was so focused in it so after when i finished the class i felt like wow It's like um, you have been to the shrink as well, you know, you just get rid of all that is on you, you just get rid of it. Do you have the same effect because you have been doing it since years already? So do you still feel that impact of feeling, I don't know, free and released after? Uh, yeah, I feel it after every single class. doesn't matter if it's Muay Thai or if it's a normal fitness class or surfing or anything, just whenever I do like an activity or a sport after the lesson I just feel like kind of like newborn and I feel like I have more energy than I had before and I think it's like a really good start for like into the day I feel like for the whole day I'm like energized and I'm like re ready to do something if I don't start my day with sport then you find me watching Netflix all day in bed <laughs> <laughs> even here in Bali <laughs> what's your favorite series that you're watching right now there um, I just started Vikings actually, but before I was watching, <laughs> I was watching Dance Moms, but Dance not on Moms? A, Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I got into it with a fun, uh, with some of my guests in the Mental Wise, and then I moved back here and I just kept watching. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so not so funny would it be like? I think you have the power to defeat a man. <laughs> would you sign that statement? I think I could defeat them. <laughs> I never tried, but I'm sure I'm stronger than some guys. Um, and oh, this is so sexy! I'm stronger <laughs> than some guys. I still love it. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people always feel like, oh, you're a girl. Like, how will you be able to like defeat a man or something? Like, a guy is always stronger, but I think that's not true. And sometimes I feel like the world has like the wrong. I about this like girls can be stronger than men's and girls can take a man on the floor and like beat him up if they want to but we just always get un underestimated I would say but I think I think I'm confident enough to say that I could take out some men's not every man obviously but some <laughs> I really like that <laughs> so to summarize you need to have this kind of physical strength you need to be Do you really need to be stronger? I have to ask nonetheless. Do you have to be stronger physically than a man? Or do you do you say no? It's also about the technique. When you know certain means, certain ways, yeah? Yeah. Can you defeat a man? Although he is stronger in a physical way than you are? I would say so. Like if you think about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, like if you know the technique, you will be able to take every man down. And if he doesn't know, even though he's strong, if you know how to like attack him and take him down and like get the right position and everything then 
you can have no chance. I didn't know that. I have to get into that sport, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Were you once in your life in a situation where it helped you to be stronger in that sense? Did it ever occur to you? I mean, you have been living here abroad in Bali for the last three years. Yeah. You're, you're sweet 23, you look so cute. I mean, if I would see you in a dress, <laughs> it wouldn't come to my mind that you were strong and then certain men around. So uh, did it happen to you as you are in particular also working in Sulawesi? It was close to Sulawesi, right? Sumatra. Okay, so Sumatra. So you're working there as a, as a surf instructor? Surf guide. Okay, we precise. Surf guide, <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> so did it ever occur to you that um, you were in a situation where it really helped you to have that strength? Um, I never went, like, I never experienced, like, a bad situation where I felt like I would be in danger or anything or that I would be scared. But I think it has a lot to do how, like, um, Ausstrahlung? I don't know how you say it. Like, how I look, presence. how my presence is. Like, if I would look more like a shy, scared girl, maybe then guys would like probably notice like oh maybe like I can try with her or something you know but then I'm I think I look more confident and like I know who I am and stuff so I feel like people like guys can sense that and then they're like have maybe a bit more respect and don't even think about making some stupid stuff <laughs> this is so well it seriously and now I'm just thinking about how I'm how I saw you in class. I mean, there were so many people in class, but nonetheless, I captured you. And it was also, I think, now when we talk about it, about your presence, because you are there. You are like, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't come in like I'm the potential victim, shoulders in. So you, I am there. And now, because we're having the interview, we can see that you are very good in keeping the eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> this is also special. You also have pretty eyes, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, you told me when we had our little conversation before the interview that you um, were raised up by a father and a mother who were very sportive. Your dad, he went even to um, to the Olympic Games, right? In which discipline and um, how did it end for him? Um, he did ski aerials, so obviously it's a winter sport. <laughs> <laughs> um, he got Olympic winner in 1994 when it, I think it was the first time it was like an official sport at the Olympics and he retired after that but so you basically jump over a big snow ramp and you perform like a bunch of like twists and so, um, flips and everything but like so in, a, cool. in like an elegant style so it's not like freestyle uh -huh. like uh, free ski or anything like that and then Obviously, the goal is to land on your two feet. <laughs> and yeah, he made it. And then he built like a water ramp back home in Switzerland. So people people are able to um, perform and practice the sport also in summer when there's no snow. So I pretty much grew up there. And he started building a fitness center. And I also grew up there. So. Since I'm born, I pretty much was surrounded by sports. And my mom as well, she was a gymnast and then she became like, I don't know the word in English, but it's like um, some kind of fitness instructor as well, like more specific in movements and stuff. And she was a dancer, so we were like always, always active, the whole family. <laughs> and still. This is really nice. I really like that. So you grew up um, with sports, with practice, with exercises, with um, going to your physical limits as well. What did your parents teach you the most? What were those things where you now being so far away uh, from them, where you say, oh, I'm so thankful because this was a lesson I got them from them. And this helps me, we're talking about strength, mm. also to now manage my life so far away out of Europe. Um, what did they teach me so much? <laughs> but definitely, like, they always teach me to be strong. And my both parents are really strong and independent. And they, like, travel a lot through the world with us since I'm small. So I feel like that also helped me a lot to, like, be more open and, like, try new stuff and, like, you know, like, talk to people and everything. 
and obviously they teach me a lot about sports and um, I also used to work for my parents fitness center and I learned a lot for working with them and I don't know just in general about life just I don't know they always supported me and they were always pretty like chilled and let me do things what I wanted to do and even though maybe they maybe didn't like it and maybe they didn't like that I left home three years ago but until now they have supported me in the best way and I'm really happy and I really appreciate it <laughs> how did they react I mean you were 20 right when you when you left yeah so how did they react when they when you told them oh I'm just packing my backpack or <laughs> did you did you travel by backpack or by suitcase My backpack. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving. Did you tell them I'm going away for a couple of years or did you just say, look, it's, I don't know, too small, Zurich. I want to go and conquer the world and I don't know, maybe I come back in two months, whatever. What did you tell them? So the plan was, so I made a school for fitness trainer for a year and I At worked. At which age? 18, 19 then? Uh, from 19 and I just finished before I was 20. And then I was supposed to start another education, just like a higher education in the fitness instructor, in for fitness instructor. And I had like a two month break between my ending of my first year and then starting my new education. And I was like, okay, I just want to like go away and like, I wanted to learn to surf really bad. And I always wanted to go to South America, but I felt like two months is not enough. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let's just go to Indonesia. It's like cheap, mm -hmm. it's like nice, it's good surf, blah, blah, blah. So I went there, here basically, <laughs> for two months. And then I had to fly back home and I went home and I got home and I started the new education the next day and I went to school and I was like, what am I doing here? Like I was sitting in the <laughs> classroom and I was just thinking about myself being surfing right now and I went home and I was like I can't do this like I have to leave again and then like my parents and my friends they were all like oh it's normal like you just got back from holidays like give it some time like you will get used to it again and stuff like that and I was like no like it's different this time like I don't want to be here like I always felt like I want to be somewhere else in the world I never felt like Switzerland is the place where I want to be like grow old or anything And those two months away in Indonesia just kind of opened my eyes even more. And then I booked the flight three months later and just worked two jobs in those three months. So I was able to save up a lot of more money. And then I left. <laughs> and then everyone was like, oh, I give you like two, three months. And then someone said, I'll give her like next six months and she will be back. <laughs> and then the time went by and it was like, pretty much like two years and then I went home last year just for a month to sit to see everyone and I surprised everyone but I came back here obviously but yeah no one I don't think anyone thought I'll be gone for three years like you know just like not want to come home and, and live home and I still don't want to like if I have to go home at one point it will be because of like money wise if I wouldn't have money anymore but even then my goal is just to like go home and like I don't know work all day every day if it has to be and then as soon as I can I want to leave again <laughs> I so love that so you had this kind of inner calling where you said no yeah I have to go out into the world and I'm going and I'm I'm giving my best and have you not been afraid I mean like you were 20 uh, years old and you told me like you and Wireman they said oh this young chicken that her try she's coming back yeah so have you been afraid of failing or of not managing to um, be financially stable um of failing not really like i never said that i'm gonna go for like a certain amount of time i just said i'm i'm going and see how it goes and i don't see myself like being a fail if i'm coming home like after two months like if that's what i wanted to do then that's how it is um, but in, in me, I knew I'm not gonna come home in two months. <laughs> so, but yeah, obviously, like the first time I left, I was a bit scared of like, oh, I'll be alone. Do I meet like new people? And especially because in Switzerland, no one is really open. So, but then the first like second I arrived in the hostel, what always helps if you travel alone. And I met so many new people and I basically was never alone. Like there was time where I wanted to be alone. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, you kind of learn how to be alone with yourself and you can like appreciate to having like me time. And then 
yeah, you're never alone if you don't want to be alone, literally. And I met so many people for traveling and I have so many like best friends I met while I've been gone. What I never imagined I would have like somewhere else in the world than home. But yeah, definitely no fail. <laughs> <laughs> So while we were having our protein shake after today's sport class, my first since years, uh, we've spoken about the Swiss people because I come from Munich and you grew up in, in Zurich and you told me, yeah, the Swiss people love them, but they are not very open-minded. Mm. So you now living abroad, how do you feel? Do you feel like a earth, uh, earth person or do you feel like, uh, no, I still belong to Switzerland, this is my nationality, I'm very proud when I get to my passport and the bank account, I don't know. <laughs> so um, how do you feel after three years being being away? And you said before you've just been back, if I'm right, for one month in those th last three years. That was that was a year ago though, okay. over a year already. I, so I was home last September. Okay, so not very often for a duration of three years. So how do you feel? Where do you belong now? Well, I'm definitely Swiss, <laughs> <laughs> even though Everyone I meet thinks I'm Brazilian, actually. <laughs> It's really funny. <laughs> But no, I'm definitely Swiss. I'm proud. I will explain because if I look at you, one can imagine you have very tan skin. I wouldn't have said you're Swiss neither. I was astonished because somehow we started to speak German, right? Yeah. And you said, oh, what? Look, I'm, a, I'm looking for a word. I cannot find it anymore. And we tried to speak German before and you were searching for certain words. So really, I believe you, you have not been home recently. <laughs> So, some other people say you might be Brazilian, but actually you are Swiss, you feel like a Swiss. Is this true? You feel like a Swiss? I don't know what it feels like to be Swiss. <laughs> It's like kind of weird, but I don't know, I'm definitely Swiss, but I don't feel like a Swiss Swiss person. Like, I would say Swiss persons, you know, they're really focused on their working and their life at home and like, I would say like have like, you know, like new clothes, new shoes like go party, like have a good life. And for me, I would say I'm more like an island girl right now. Like, What is an island girl? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's just, I love the ocean. I love being in the ocean. I love walking around barefoot. And like, just like a more simple life, I would say, you know, like, I don't know, don't worry about what car you're riding or if you have the newest phone or anything like that. Just put a bikini on and go and lay on the beach or something. <laughs> That's more what I'm worried about to keep my <laughs> How much money do you spend a month on clothing? Um, here? I don't know. I don't really have an overview, but... Um, the last few months I've been shopping a little bit, but I have no idea how much money. But for me it's like... Because I was living for a year on a really, really small island in the Mentawais, and I don't have any shops there or like anything I can like spend my money on so once I moved back to Bali I was like oh my god shoes oh my god clothes oh my god this oh my god that so I got a little out of control but I'm trying my best but it's also a lot cheaper like buying stuff around here than if I would buy stuff in Switzerland so but yeah I don't really have an overview of my money to be honest <laughs> that's a good thing let me go shortly back to martial arts um, I just had the idea in mind, like, you were going to meet a man. Body is also full of lovely, handsome, good-looking <laughs> man. So, um, what do they say when they learn that you are in martial arts? Is it like, for, for them something, wow, that's pretty sexy, it's a strong woman, not only mentally, but also physically. But did it also occur to you that for a man it's a kind of, she's not competing with me, because I used to be the stronger one. Mm. So what are your personal experiences, Ned? Um, I never heard like any guy saying like, oh, you're doing like, you know, like martial arts or something and in a bad way. But I think it's more like, because I'm more attracted to guys who are already stronger than me. Like, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I know that I'm strong for a girl. And like, I don't know, if you look at my arms, they look already really strong. <laughs> so if But I, you are still feminine. I mean, no one can see you right now. You're so feminine. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> But I don't know why, but I guess it just, you know, like I'm more attracted to people who either serve or who are really fit because that's like my main interests that I have. So, and I really got 
like meeting a guy who'd be like, oh, I don't like that you're like doing so much sport or anything. I feel like it's more like a, yeah, like it's more like probably sexy or like interesting if a girl is like fit and like does a lot. I don't know, it's my point of view, but I like strong guys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> After three years in Bali, what lesson did Bali teach you? Well, I wasn't three years in Bali. I ah, you were in other parts of Indonesia and one month. And I, and I was and I was traveling around. I see. Yeah. Where did you travel to? Um, so started in Indonesia, then I went to the Philippines, then I went to Sri Lanka, back to Indonesia. Um, and then where did I go? I think back to the Philippines. <laughs> They are amazing. Yeah, I back to that. Indonesia. I was like back and forth of Indonesia. And then I went to Australia for a little bit. It was too expensive. And then I came back to Indonesia. And then I went to Japan for two weeks. Also very expensive. Back into, yeah, also very expensive. <laughs> and I came back to Indonesia. So most of the time, obviously Indonesia. But I always like left and like said, like wanted to see something else. And, but I always like had to come back and I know it's just like my home I would say <laughs> I love being in Indonesia <laughs> so I precise what did you learn during your travels in the last three years and question in between you have been all the time financially independent or did your parents still support you or did you know like if something happens to you like really bad thing like health issue I'm talking about mm. health issue where you say you know I need an urgent required operation and I know I can call my parents or to pay for the rent for the next three months. So have you been in general financially independent? But you knew that in bad cases like those I just um, uh, went into, you could call your parents. Mm -hmm. That would be my first question. Second comes after. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started traveling and I had a bunch of savings mm -hmm. because I've been working since I'm 16. So that definitely helped a lot. And then I did got a little fa like financial help from my parents like they made me like a bank account and since I was 19 I have like access on that but it's my own way how I use it and like I thought it was more like to be for like education so maybe have your first apartment or stuff like that how sweet from your parents yeah <laughs> it's really it. nice um, but for me it was more like being happy and like enjoy life so I decided to use some money out of that account for travel that's why I've been gone for a while but then I was also living for a year in the mental wise where I barely didn't use any money so that kind of like made my travels even longer so yeah and if like something would happen like obviously I have travel insurance and they will cover most of the stuff But if something like really bad would happen and I would need money, like I know my parents would always like help me out or anything. So that's good to know. <laughs> It's good to know. It gives also kind of mental security. Yeah. You could go when you're away. So the lessons learned during your travels, maybe you have one lesson you would like to share, mm. like where you would say, yeah, this really helped me in developing to become the person I am right now. Um, <laughs> I don't really know. My lesson, I don't know. Just never make plans. <laughs> It's like the worst thing for me. Like I'm bad with making plans. I always end up changing my plans. Like I'm very like last minute and like I want to keep my options open and do whatever I feel like in the end. I did one plan in the beginning and booked the flight to New Zealand that I never took in the end. And since then I like never did any plans anymore and just basically go with the flow. That's why I have it also tattooed. <laughs> um, It's tattooed here on the uh, upper arm and the inside. Yes. Go with the flow. I saw it actually before. <laughs> I like it. Um, but yeah, definitely learn just to be open and like be yourself. Don't like change for anything and just yeah, know who you are and do whatever you feel like. Like sometimes you always want to make it right for everyone, but you should always come first even though maybe it hurts other people sometimes but yeah I think that's like the things I learned I think so <laughs> it's beautiful thanks for sharing I would have um, spontaneously three, three more questions for you mm -hmm. 
first of all, you have a little daughter. If Once. I'm... Oh, okay. Uh, not now. <laughs> like, what? Later on. Um, what will be the most important thing when it comes to strength that you would like her, um, that would like her to have or to possess or to develop further? What kind of quality, like characteristic quality, you would love to see uh, in your daughter to develop so that she is strong enough to conquer the world? I definitely want my daughter to be confident. <laughs> like, I want her to know that she's strong and that even though she's a girl, like, she can rule the world and she doesn't have to change for anything. And I think I will make sure that she knows that and I will make sure that she can kick some ass. <laughs> Or we kick some ass together. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Oh, I picture that right now. I love it. <laughs> um, second question. Imagine the world is just its nothing else than a big theater, a theater game, and you're a god above. And you can give certain roles or make certain theater acts. If you would be god in that case, uh, and you have one thing right now to change, looking from above to the world, what would it be? One thing that you can change. Hmm, good question. One thing I could change. I probably would change the people who rule the world. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Because they suck. <laughs> good answer, straight to the point. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Because if those people wouldn't be around, I think the world would be such a better place. Last question. Um, what are you personally afraid of? Ah, oh, I want to hear three three things you're personally afraid of. Is this possible? Ah, I don't know. What am I afraid of? I think my friend asked me that the other day too, and I couldn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a little afraid of not like the future, but like where I will be in the future. Like right now I'm just living my best life and do whatever I want, but I know it's not always gonna be like that. Like at one point I need like a proper job and like have like an income and I don't know, I just, that's maybe I'm a bit afraid that my life has to change at one point if I don't, yeah, I don't know. So is it I because say. you say like financially you would need to have it maybe different once you have a partner or When I have a house or when I have with partner and children, is this what you're talking about? That one day you need to have a bit more financial stability and then your lovely account from your parents is yeah. empty? So this is where you say, maybe then I have to change. Or is it like Bali is paradise? Like it's, uh, it's not the real life my parents have and my friends back home. So maybe I have to go back to that kind of lifestyle. Mm. So what exactly do you mean? Bali is real life for me. <laughs> <laughs> But the other thing like mm -hmm. that my life maybe has to change so I can be able to like mm -hmm. be f like have it like give my kids a good life one day okay or like you know and maybe I'm also afraid to like commit to something <laughs> to commit to something yeah I'm, I'm like what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like in everything like commit to one job like commit to a partner or I don't know, I'm just, um, I would say I'm a free soul, so for me it's hard to commit, so I'm afraid that I have to commit one day to something. <laughs> yeah, because you said before you like to be in the moment, if honest, yeah. Yeah, and you like uh, just to go with the flow, and yeah, that's what you have here to do. And of course commitment is responsibility for a long period of time, yeah. isn't this what you mean? Yes. <laughs> What's the solution? I don't know, I think I just... Obviously, I need to find something I'm happy in doing so it doesn't feel like I have to commit and like, you know what I mean, like make your job your hobby or something and obviously if you find like the right person, it will also not feel like you have to commit or anything. But just thinking about it right now, it's just like, ah. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know if I have a third thing that I'm afraid of. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think I'm afraid. Probably, I don't know, just to get like hurt really bad, and I wouldn't be able to like do sports anymore or go surf. But I don't really think about this. But just because you asked me. I uh, so you're not mean like yeah, being kicked out by somebody else, but being hurt. Like I told you about my accident, right? Yeah, yeah. I was on crunches for four months. Yeah. You know how hard it was because yeah. I couldn't move. I think if that would happen to me, I would be like in deep depression. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish you that. It will not come. Thank you so much, Liv. It was really a very <laughs> sunshine interview. I really enjoyed talking to you. I learned a lot, and I'm looking forward for our next martial arts class. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and can't wait to kick somewhere else's with you. Yes! <laughs> oh, beautiful. How long was that? 32 and 28 seconds. Perfect.